story is a classic story, The Nutcrackers. A Christmas party at Stone Groom House, where Claire is given a nutcracker as a Christmas present. The story begins on Christmas Eve in the 19th century Germany. It begins in Strafferburn's house, where everyone is preparing for the festive Christmas Eve party. And Strafferburn's house is a large and beautiful house with the grandest Christmas tree imaginable. Mrs. Trapburn is hurrying about ensuring that every detail is attended to the guests as the guests begin to arrive. Clara and Fritz, the Strapburnberg children, are playing as their friends arrive. Clara is sweet and kind child, while brother Fritz is quite mischievous. When all the guests arrive, the party is filled with music and cheer. Clara dances with her friends, or Fitz amuses himself with his friends by talking Clara. Clara, as she dances, Fitz is promptly scolded by Mrs. Scolden, and he stops for a moment. As the party goes full swing, a mysterious man appears in the parlour. He is wearing a long black coat, and all the attention is turned to him. Children are all afraid. He reveals himself. Recognised instant by Clara as our great grandfather, godfather, Uncle Dossemeyer. Clara is immediately drawn to him and gives him a huge hug. She's always excited to see him. Uncle Dossemeyer greets all the guests and then from underneath his coat pulls out three magical dolls a rag doll, a ballerina doll, and a soldier doll. He winds up each doll and places them on the floor. Ragdoll dances very loosely, as if she had no joints. She spins and twists and flops around, until she finally collapses on the, onto the floor. Brina, ballerina doll has on the most beautiful dress, dances on her toes and pirouettes across the floor. A soldier doll dances stiffly with a stern look on his face. He's strong, proud, powerful movements. After the dolls dance, all the children open up their presents. Each child has been brought a gift by Uncle Dutton The boys get stick horses, which they can use to ride around the whole house, making noises. The girls always see dolls, which they gently care for. Clara initially is disappointed, as she sees she has no gift for her. Uncle Dutton reaches under his cape and gives Clara a colourful decorated box. Inside, Clara finds beautiful Nutcracker doll. A nutcracker with the most vibrant colours and such detail that she believes that he may actually come alive. Clara is pleased with the gift of the Nutcracker and she dances happily with her uncle when all is done, they are all done dancing. Clara picks up the Nutcracker and craters it in her arms. Out of nowhere, Fritz arrives. He grabs the nutcracker from her hands, holds it in the air, and at which time he and Clara begin to struggle with it. They both pull and tug until they struggle. The nutcracker breaks. Clara, Clara looks at the nutcracker lying broken on the floor. The nutcracker has the best gift she ever got. Dorsifa Maya goes over to Clara and comforts her, picks up the broken nutcracker in a strange and mysterious way. He puts it back together underneath his cloak. When he gives it back to Clara, it has a scarf around the nutcracker to help keep it secure. He gives Clara very specific instructions. He tells her to leave the nutcracker under the Christmas tree overnight. On Christmas morning, the nutcracker will be good as new. Clara thinks about her grand. Grandfather's promise and looks longingly at the nutcracker. He still has tears in her eyes, but is willing to try anything. Eventually it's time for all the guests to go. Clara and Fritz are sad to see their friends leave. They wave, they wave goodbye. They heartily wish each guest a Merry Christmas. When everyone is gone, Mrs. Strapman breathes a sigh of relief. She turns to Clara and Fritz, kisses them goodnight and sends them off to bed. Before she goes to bed, Clara takes on one more 
takes one more look at her nutcracker and places it under the tree, just as Uncle Dossemeyer instructed. The Nutcracker and Clara battle the evil mouse queen and her mice. As she lay in bed, all Clara could think of was her Nutcracker. How he was lying there, broken and alone, under the Christmas tree. Funny, he couldn't, she couldn't stand any more. She went downstairs to check him. When she got downstairs, she finds her Nutcracker under the tree, just as she left it. A moment to her surprise. Clara thought she saw her nutcracker smile. She picks the nutcracker up and looks at it closely. But she didn't notice anything different. Perhaps she was just seeing things. It's late and Clara has had a long day. So she puts her nutcracker carefully back under the tree and lies down on the sofa next to the tree. Clara lays her head down and closes her eyes. But just as she is about to drift to sleep, she hears a scurrying noise. Clara sits straight up and stares into the darkness. Her nutcracker is still there under the tree. But what's that? As she looks into the darkness in the corner of the parlour, she sees something moving towards her. It's a grey, has a long leather tail, a tail. It's about the size of a dog. It looks like a giant mouse. Then right before her eyes, another mouse, a mouse scampers across the floor and disappears into the darkness. Then another. More and more mice begin to appear. One after another, they run out from the darkness. One mouse runs right up to the Christmas tree around the nutcracker and right up to Clara. When he sees Clara, he snarls and runs out of the room. Clara is very frightened. She jumps off the sofa and tries to run away. And when she gets to the end of the parlour, she stops dead in her tracks, standing right in front of her. Blocking her way is a giant mouse queen. Mouse queen has long, slimy claws and two terribly ugly front teeth. She is tall as a bear, wears a tiny crown on her head, and carries a crooked sword. He swings the sword at Clara, and the little mice chase Clara around the parlour. In no time at all, the mice and the mouse queen have cornered Clara. Just as the mouse queen is about to strike, a mysterious figure appears. It's Uncle Dossemeyer. At the sight of Dossemeyer, the queen, mouse queen runs away. Dossemeyer picks up Clara and returns her to the sofa next to her nutcracker. Just when Clara thinks everything is back to normal, Uncle Dossemeyer casts a spell. He begins to wave his hands and gestures in one powerful motion. As he does this, everything begins to change. The room gets bigger. The Christmas tree grows taller and taller to its towers over Clara. She doesn't know if she's getting smaller or everything else is getting bigger. Then she remembers a nutcracker. He's gotten t- bigger too. He's tall as a real person. Raka, a nutcracker has come alive. He has brought an army of soldiers with him. He motions to Clara to stand clear. The battle begins. Nutcracker then leads his soldiers courageously into the battle against the mice. Clara sits perched atop the sofa and watches the nutcracker. The battle rages back and forth between the nutcracker, his soldiers and the mice. Eventually the nutcracker and the mouse queen face each other. One on one begin the battle. The mouse queen fights so fiercely that Clara, Clara is frightened for a nutcracker, but the nutcracker is fast and strong. He holds his quick mouse queen at bay a long, long time in the end. Though the mouse queen gets a better nutcracker and stabs him in the ribs. Nutcracker stumbles backwards. The mouse queen laughs and raises her sword to finish off the nutcracker. But as she, just as she is about to strike, Clara throws a slipper and hits the mouse queen square in the head. At that moment, the nutcracker summons up every last bit of energy and thrusts his sword through the mouse queen. The mouse queen stumbles back and falls to the ground. She shakes and quivers but at last he stops moving. The queen, the mouse queen, is dead. Clara and the nutcracker did it. But the nutcracker, the nutcracker has fallen to the floor. He wound is too deep. Clara kneels down beside the wounded nutcracker and starts to cry. As she sits there, sobbing, 
A nutcracker, Uncle. Over a nutcracker, Uncle Delsomeyer appears again in his long black cape. He lowers his cape over the nutcracker, and when he pulls it away, Clara sees a nutcracker soldier. He's really a nutcracker prince. Furthermore, the nutcracker prince is alive. Nutcracker thanks Clara for saving him, and he holds out his hand and offers to take Clara to his kingdom, a land of sweets. Clara takes the nutcracker prince's hand, and off they go. On the way to the land of the sweets, Clara and Nutcracker, Nutcracker pass through a beautiful snow-covered forest. The Snow Queen and all the snowflakes dance for Clara. They jump and swell around and create a beautiful dance. When they're all done, dancing the Snow Queen wishes Clara and the Nutcracker a safe journey. They leave to the land of the sweets. The Nutcracker Prince and Clara arrive in a land of sweets, where all the sweets dance for her. Clara and the Nutcracker Prince finally arrive in a land of sweets. Clara is amazed at the beautiful palace. There is a candy everywhere. The walls and floors are made of sweets. There are giant candy canes growing from the ground. The Nutcracker Prince introduces Clara to the Queen of the Land of the Sweets, the Sugar Plum Fairy. The Sugar Plum Fairy calls out to her friends, who are all different types of sweets all around the world. They are excited to meet Clara, and she greets them with a smile and a curtsy. Cur- cur- the Nutcracker Prince describes a battle with the mouse queen and the mice. He tells of how Clara saved him from certain death by hitting the mouse queen between the eyes with her slipper. The Sugar Plum Fairy is so impressed a Clara is declared a day of celebration. Sweets from all over the world gather at a palace and darts for Clara. The Nutcracker Prince escorts Clara to the seat of honour so she can watch the performance. The first dance is smooth and spicy chocolate from Spain. The dance is very saucy. They move their hands around and dance from one spot to the other so skillfully. As the Spanish dancers leave, the lights begin to darken. The smell of coffee from Arabia fills the air. The Arabian coffee appears. He dances like a genie. He has two dark spirits. He wakes from two bubbling godorans. Arabian dancers wear simple but decorative belly clothing. They move slowly with purpose. The next to perform is tea from China. Chinese dancers wear bright coloured clothing. Made of silk, and they make they carry silly fans. Chinese dancers, tea dancers, uh, a very lively dance. Next, the crushing candy canes leap to the stage. A field of energy, they jump and turn. At this point, Clara head is spinning. You've never seen so many candies, and their dancing was so amazing. When the Russian candy canes leave, leave a group of marzipan. Candies enter. They form a graceful peasant dance to food music. As they are leaving, a huge woman with a giant skirt and mixing bowl enters. It's Mother Ginger, and she's baking something special for Clara. Clara just can't sit still any longer. She gets up out of her chair and runs to see what Mother Ginger is cooking. When she gets closer, Clara realizes that Mother Ginger is not alone. Under her skirt are all her children, one after the other. The little children running up from under the skirt begin to dance with Clara. What fun it is to dance with the little children. Eventually Mother Ginger finishes her cookies and the children finish dancing. Mother Ginger hands Clara a cookie and waves goodbye. As Clara sits back from down the garden of flowers, Enter the brightest, most perfect flowers ever, but no one has ever the slightest blemish of imperfection. Blemish of imperfection. The flowers dance a beautiful waltz. They have many different coloured flowers. They make wonderful patterns and lines when they move. Clara is most almost breathless when they finish. The t- master dances in that crocker prince and the sugar plum fairy. They dance a beautiful praise the deuce. At first they dance is slow and romantic. Then that 
crackle prince lifts the sugar plum fairy and carries her across the stage. The sugar plum fairy dances to her on her toes. When the slow part of the dance finishes, the sugar plum fairy leaves. The nun Chucker Prince performs for Clara by himself. Now Chucker Prince performs a lively dance with lots of jumps and turns. When the sugar plum fairy dances by herself, her dance is frightly. At the very end, they both perform a very fast dance together. When they are done, Clara stands up and started clapping. Oh, how exciting Clara wishes to stay in the land of the sweets forever. The nuts, Crackers Prince, wakes up to Clara and tells her it's time to go. All the sweets return to the dance for Clara one more time. But when they're done, the Nutcracker Prince waves goodbye and fades away. Passes is getting darker. For a moment, Clara is confused. Does not know where she is. She opens her eyes, and when she opens them, she sees some light is shining through her window. She's at home in the parlour, and it's morning. There is the Nutcracker. Where is the Nutcracker, Clara? Clara wonders. No, no, Clara, eh? Nutcracker, yes, the Nutcracker. Uncle does for my promise. The Nutcracker would be good. It's new in the morning. Clara runs to the Christmas tree, picks up the beloved Nutcracker doll. Uncle does for my promise came true. Young Nutcracker is as good as new.